We did do this last year, but I want this in your notebook for this year as well. In the first box, I would like you to put the variable x. In the second box, you're going to put the inequality greater than or equal to. And in the last box, we're going to put the number 7. We're going to add to our title, Inequalities, Order Matters for Graphing. If you have your variable on the left, and I'd like you to label these as we go, and your symbol in the middle with the constant to the right, graphing will be incredibly easy for you. We're going to take some notes in the flip-flops. And I'm going to remind you, we are going quickly, but these will also be put on Classroom. So if there's anything you need to go back and catch up on, it will be available. So if, let's say you have 7 is less than or equal to x. Is the variable on the left there or the right? Right. We want it on the right. left. So if you have to flip flop, I know many of you are writing what I'm writing. I'm just going to read it real quick. <coughs> if you have to flip-flop the sides of the inequality, you must also flip the inequality symbol. So with our first example, we would take X and flip the symbol and move the number to the right. If you had the word problem, 13 is greater than y, it would be written as 13 is greater than y. We would rewrite that as y is less than 13. I love using highlighters when we're graphing these, and you'll see that when we do our graphing foldable. To do a quick, I always picture the graphs of these as like zooming in. We don't need to start at zero every time. The number we're graphing here is what? So on my graph, I'm going to put 12, 13, 14. Picture that zoom in. What number are we circling? And this is why order matters. The symbol tells you what direction to go. If the variable is on the left, the symbol is the direction your arrow needs to go. And it goes to the left. And that is why order matters with inequalities.